Let's go next to our friend Kyoko from Japan. We haven't heard from Kyoko for a little bit. Kyoko, what is it? 7 a.m. on Friday there? Yes, uh, it's like 7, 7 a.m. Can wow, you hear me? I can hear you beautifully. OK, great. OK, so, um, yeah, thank you again for taking up my call. Pleasure. Um, it's a really honor to talk to you again. So um, I, uh, this time I have a question. I'd love to hear your opinion. Sure. Um, you know, so many of us uh, concerned about anti-vaxxers, you know, vaccine skeptical and mm -hmm. how difficult to reach out to them. Right. And then I think many uh, vaccine hesitancy uh, comes from the you know, fundamental distrust of the government and a big pharmas, uh, because, you know, uh, pharmaceutical companies are profit oriented organizations and all companies are, and there is nothing wrong with it, but um, they are so often put profit over people's safety and health. And if people don't maybe believe the government is capable of preventing those companies from hurting us for their profit. So, um, you know, we saw time and time again that they betrayed us. So unfortunately, maybe uh, even the people who believe in science may just don't believe the data published by the pharma companies or the government institutions, you know, thinking that they may not show the data, which is convenient, inconvenient for them. You're not wrong. So I, I mean, these that. are the roots. You're, you're completely right in that. Historically, mm -hmm. anti-vaccine sentiment in the U.S. comes from one of two places, distrust of big pharma mm -hmm. or distrust mm -hmm. of the government. Uh, and to some degree, those um, hesitations are logical, but that you can't just be you have to find a way to be satisfied. If someone gives you the information where they say, hey, that's OK, interesting. Here's how the vaccines work. Here's the truth about the studies here. At some point, you have to say, OK, you know what? These are profit driven companies. You can't always trust governments, but clearly the right thing to do is to go and get the vaccine. So you're not wrong in identifying the elements that cause it. I think you're right there. All right. And I just really, uh, you know, personally, you know, I just was uh, very happy to go and get a, uh, myself vaccinated. Sure, sure. And I'm told, I mean, in Japan, as you can see now, that most people are very happy to get vaccinated. Yep. The number is going up, growing. But, you know, it, what do you think? Uh, how can we reach out to those people? I mean, it's just I know it's difficult educating them how randomized with you know, double blind, placebo control studies. Yeah, it's I mean, hard to convince people with right. that. No, I know what seems to be most effective is that if they hear from people that they already trust, that it makes sense oh. to go and get the vaccine. That uh -huh. seems to be the most effective, Kyoko. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. OK, great. That's that's all from Kyoko. Me. I have a question. So I have a question for you. I oh, want you to be really honest with me. Oh, sure. The famous stinky tofu. Is it really that stinky? <laughs> Is it really that stinky? Oh, wow. That's such a specific thing. I mean, uh, are you really uh, are you talking about the type of tofu from Okinawa, who is a ferment, which is fermented and it's really, really stinky? I am indeed. Uh, I, I am exactly talking oh, about that. Wow. Uh, uh, if you like cheese and you like blue cheese, I know you are against blue cheese. I'm sure you love it. <laughs> oh, my God. No, it, blue cheese really, is not good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it tastes like cheese. I mean, smells like cheese. But I mean, I have to say a natto who is a fermented soybean, that's stinkier. I mean, but I, I like I've had that. I've had that before and oh, I kind of like it. And you liked it? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So then I'll go for the stinky tofu then. Right. I'm sure you, you Just may find one it. last question, Kyoko, before sure, I let you go, because sure. I'm working on improving my miso soup technique. Are you uh, in favor of or uh -huh. against the dried fish flakes to make the dashi broth. Oh, well, I'm totally um, for it. You are. Because, I mean, yes, I mean, uh, but it, it's a really, um, um, you know, the trick is, I mean, you mix with uh, veggie and non-vegetable ingredient, uh, ingredients together. Yes. You know, the more you know, uh, uh, elements in the broth is better. Elements That's what I think. Yeah. I am 100 percent for the fish flake. Mm -hmm. I went and I got mm -hmm. the uh, the bonito flakes. And there's what's what's oh, the other wow. kind that you can use also? Uh, the, the dried sardine, if you can get them. Ah, I don't know. the dried sardine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just a dried sardine. It's just a whole fish. So you may get offended by looking at them. I don't know. No, no, I won't get offended. Listen, I think uh, we have made major progress in bridging the cultural gap of the United States mm. and Japan here. We are all in favor of the dried fish flake.
Oh, wow. Really? That's so exciting. Maybe <laughs> I can eat good uh, miso soup in the United States then. I, I hope think to visit you could. There. I think you could. Kyoko, always a pleasure. Thank you for the call. Okay. Thank you so much for thank taking you. my call again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow, guys, that's a top five caller of all time. There's just no question whatsoever.